chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I was uh, going to share about, uh, I'll not talk much about my children's message this morning, but uh, I just want to mention a word or two about it. So, how many of you believe it's possible to fish while you're asleep and catch fish? All right. All right. You, we've got some fishermen here. Yeah. 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 And I mean real fish. Not just, you know, green fish, but real fish. Yeah. No, I'm not sure how you do it, but uh, <laughs> the way my uncle used to do it is called a trot line. You're familiar with that? I, I figured that's what most of you were. were uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, <laughs> but when I ask the kids this generally, you know, the children's message, no, nah, preacher, we don't believe you. You can't fish while you're asleep, <laughs> you know. And, uh, uh, and when I was up in New York, I asked this question and and I don't think it's legal in New York. There's probably a lot of laws about it here too, but I think it's legal in Arkansas. But anyway, uh, we're gonna be talking about, uh, the reason I mentioned this is Jesus asked Peter to do something that's a little unusual in, in today's uh, message. So let's pick up at uh, chapter five, verse one. If we want to do what Jesus calls us to do, first we have to hear uh, about, uh, hear Jesus. Luke chapter five, verse one. Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret and he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Now it may seem strange to us, but many people have never heard about Jesus, even in our own country. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little more in a moment. In Romans 10, verses 14 and 15, Paul says, How then will they call on him in whom they've not believed? How will they believe in him whom they've not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. I'm glad our church supports missions and a large portion of our uh, giving at the church goes to the cooperative program and much of that goes to missions. I'm glad for that. But also every Christian is to proclaim about the love of Christ to others. Uh, the word preacher simply means proclaimer, one who is an announcer. Now in our culture, we take the word preacher and we have connected that with pastor. So whenever someone says the word preacher, they automatically think pastor. But actually, all of us are called as Christians to proclaim the gospel to others. So in that sense, we are all to be preachers. Now, I mentioned about the fact that in our country, there are people who do not know about Jesus and what he's done for us. You may say, even in Arkansas, I believe in Arkansas too. I know when I was in New York, we went uh, street witnessing one time in an area called Hamilton Hill. Hamilton Hill is kind of considered the armpit of Schenectady. It's, it's just a rough area. And I walked up to a lady on the street and I said uh, something like, uh, what do you think about Jesus? I don't know anyone named Jesus. I don't know who you're talking about. She was being honest, sincere. She knew nothing about Jesus Christ, as far as I could tell. Now, this was not Peter's first time to hear about Jesus. In John chapter one, verse 35, it talks about John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples. And, uh, and as Jesus walked by, he said, behold the Lamb of God, 
the two disciples heard him speak. They followed Jesus. And one of those two that heard Jesus speak was named Andrew. And Andrew went and told Simon Peter, his brother, we have found the Messiah. So that was the first time that Peter had heard about Jesus. He was not a fully committed follower at this point. He was still out fishing. Uh, so uh, it, it takes some time sometimes for, you know, as we begin to follow the Lord, there's steps in the process. Luke chapter five, verse three says that Jesus got into Simon's boat and I asked Simon to put out a little, <laughs> a little way from the land. And then Jesus sat down and began to teach the people. He sat down and began to teach. Uh, in that day and time, it was common uh, for the preacher to sit down and the people to stand. Yeah. I think that changed when the people realized, you know, he'll preach shorter sermons if he has to stand and we're the ones sitting. But that's what, uh, so that's why we see Jesus sitting. And Luke 5, 1 says there was a crowd pressing around Jesus. You know, people really want something if they stand in line or if they crowd around something or someone. And uh, several years ago, the Cas Rivers Casino opened in Schenectady. Some people, according to the newspaper, waited 12 hours to be the first ones to go into the casino. Some, uh, they really wanted to get in there. Some wealthy people spent millions of dollars on the casino so those people could go in there and win money. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Actually, the wealthy people spent millions of dollars on a casino so people could go in there and lose money so they could get their money. The owners could get the money, you know. And uh, I'm not condemning you if you go to a casino. I'm just telling you, it's the owners who are making the most money at these places, all right? So I've also heard of a little boy in a third world country who said to an American doctor who was visiting there, are you telling me people stand in line for hours for an apple? and they can't even eat it? Okay, you know, think about that one. Well, so what do you want in life? Do you want fulfillment? Do you want your life to have meaning? I want to suggest to you, to have fulfillment, to have meaning, you need to want what God wants for you because he knows what's best. He knows what's best. Jesus came to give eternal life. He came to give abundant life. He knows what's best for you and I. Now, in John 8, 31 through 32, Jesus was saying to the Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If we're going to follow Jesus and have the abundant life and the eternal life he wants us to have, we need to hear him. We need to hear him. And sin will destroy us. But he promises, if we will continue in his word, we will, we will be his true disciples, we will know the truth, and the truth will make us free. Well, we can have freedom from sin in our life, but... Uh, our piano tutor came yesterday and, and, and uh, there was a key that was sticking and he fixed it. Did he fix it okay, Nancy? Is it working now? Uh, <laughs> it worked for him, but it's okay. still sticking some. <laughs> okay. Still sticking some. All right. Well, uh, so I, I got to visit with him and, and you know, uh, I said, I'm a preacher. I just got to ask you. I said, are you a believer? He said, yeah. He said, he he credits his mom, his mom often prayed for him and he came to fight faith in Christ. And he said, uh, before he came to faith in Christ, I don't think he'd mind me sharing this with you, uh, that he, you know, he lived in, in the world. He did some things he knew he shouldn't be doing. And, and when he finally uh, gave his life fully to Christ and some of the desire for those things went away, 
God began working in his heart. So I don't know about you, but as I follow Christ, there's some sins in my life that I wasn't tempted to do anymore when I fully surrendered to the Lord. Now there's some other ones I still have to, I'm still tempted and I still have to uh, depend on the Lord's help. But Jesus says the truth will make you free. If you continue in his word, you'll know the truth and it will set you free. Do you want that? If you do, listen to him. What God wants is best for us. And we're more likely to have what God wants if we listen to him and love him and obey him. In other words, spend time with him in prayer, in the study of God's word. I'm glad you're here this morning because that's one of the ways that we can hear the Lord is that we, as we listen to his word preached. And so um, Peter did not, as I said earlier, Peter did not begin to follow Jesus immediately. That would take some time. It takes time for each of us in the process of our Christian growth. Uh, I trusted Christ as my savior as when I was about 12 or 13, was baptized. But I sensed at that time God was calling me to preach. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. And I didn't, uh, I didn't surrender to the call of ministry at that time. God kept working on me. I started going away, being disobedient to him. And finally, in his grace, he showed me, if you continue in this sinful lifestyle, you're going to destroy yourself. And I finally said, okay, Lord, I'll do whatever you want. And I gave my life fully to him. And uh, so for each of us, the pathway may be a little different. The steps in the process may be a little different. Sometimes we have to have patience with one another and seek to love one another and be patient with each other as, as we make the steps in the process. So uh, in, in this case, Jesus said, I need to go, would you let me sit in your boat and, and, and go out here and just a little way, ways off so I can pre, you know, preach to the people. And uh, Peter may have continued to fish, uh, but he was listening to Jesus the whole time. He didn't have any choice. So Jesus was in the boat with him. Okay. As a disciple or follower of Jesus, we have to hear Jesus. Second, we have to obey Jesus. Look at verse four, chapter five, verse four. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered and said, master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. So Jesus was talking to a professional fisherman. He was an expert in fishing. If you've been fishing all your life, uh, you don't need some preacher to tell you how to fish. I mean, you already know how to fish. If that's your business, this is one of the major problems with us as disciples. As we get older, we think we already know things. In fact, sometimes we think we know everything. <laughs> we think we already know what to do, how to do it. And, and Jesus may call us to do something that doesn't fit in with our understanding of what we're supposed to do. We need to listen to him. Um, so I'm sure you know a lot more about things than this preacher does. Some things anyway. But you don't know more than what God knows. And I don't know more than what God knows. He always knows what's best for us. So we need to hear Jesus and we need to obey him. And But oftentimes what happens is uh, we'll hear in God's word that he says to do something and we'll come up with some excuse not to do it. So God may say to give and no, I need to hang on to what I've got. I don't need to give it. God may say to tell someone about Jesus. Well, I'm kind of in a hurry right now. This is not a convenient time, you know, but we have this burden to tell someone about Jesus. And uh, 
But the fellow I spoke with yesterday, he, he told me about a time in his life when he, he, uh, he sensed that he shouldn't do something, but he went ahead and did it anyway. And thankfully, it was not a major problem for him in his life. But I've had experiences like that. When, okay, this seems like the best thing to do right now, but why do I have this feeling I shouldn't do it? I mean, it's not that I'm doing something sinful. It's just I'm making a decision to do something that maybe I shouldn't be doing. And, and I, uh, so, but I know better. I know better. <laughs> so uh, my son Tommy was home. We were uh, at, uh, in the Northeast where I lived in New York. I had an outdoor wood boiler, and that's the way I heated my house. Uh, put wood in there. And I could get wood for free. I could go get pallets and cut them up. And so he was home. I had a trailer, my truck. But we need to go get some wood. I had this feeling. I mean, my son's home. He's bigger than I. He's strong. You know, I can get him to help me. But for some reason, I felt like I shouldn't do it. But I mean, after all, my son's home. We it's a pretty day. Let's go get some wood. So we drove down <laughs> to. Uh, a red light and I was stopping there and they were doing some kind of work on the road and a truck began to turn left. There was plenty of room for him to get by on my side, but he ran into me. I was just sitting there. He ran into me. It would have been a good day to stay home. <laughs> so I had to be without my truck and I didn't get any wood that day, if you believe it. So uh, give Peter some credit here. He was willing to use his business for Jesus' ministry. He was willing to let Jesus uh, speak from the boat. And then when Jesus told him, uh, go out and put your net out there, he was willing to do it, even though as a fisherman, he knew better. Because, I mean, they'd been up all night. He knew better. But okay, if you say to do it, uh, I'll do it. He obeyed Jesus and saw blessings in his life. If you want to see blessings in your life, you've got to be willing to do what the Lord wants. Now, he may bless you even when you're disobedient. Thank God he does. But some of his blessings are only available to us when we love him and obey him. Uh, so if Peter had not obeyed Jesus, he would have missed a miraculous catch of fish and a lot more. There's something else I want you to notice about Peter. Uh, he could have hoarded all this catch of fish and sunk his boat. Instead, he said, hey, guys, come over, <laughs> come over here and help me. I got all these fish. And, uh, and then he shared his fish, these fish with his friends and their boats began to sink. Apparently, they all got back to shore okay, okay with their boats. But uh, don't hoard God's blessings in your life. Be willing to share with others. I'm not talking about always giving money or something. I'm talking about sharing what God has done in your life to bless others. So we have to hear Jesus. We have to obey Jesus. Third, we have to be convicted by Jesus. Look at verse 6. When they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. Now, if you're wondering, when do I begin to squirm some in this sermon. You can do it now. We have to be convicted by Jesus. Preacher, I don't want to be convicted. I don't want to feel guilty about my sin. Would you believe I identify with you? <laughs> I don't want to feel guilty about my sin. But you do know that sin will destroy you, right? So you would rather stay in sin rather than be convicted. Is that what you're going to tell me? Yeah, I know sin will destroy me, but I would rather have fun. I'd rather feel good um, and destroy myself in the process. No, don't do that. 
You know, a person cannot come to Christ in salvation unless God the Holy Spirit works in their life and convicts them of sin so they see their need for Christ. So conviction of sin is a wonderful thing that happens. Someone may say, I don't want to go to church. That preacher makes me feel bad about something I've done in my life. <clears throat> I trust it's God working in our hearts that makes us shameful of our sin. Uh, it's not that I'm up here telling you why I want you to feel shameful. I want God to work in your heart and show you your need for him. <clears throat> Pardon me. The path to salvation begins with conviction of sin. Uh, the path to fulfillment in your Christian life begins with conviction of sin. As we grow as a Christian, God continues to convict us of sin so we can turn away from it as Christians and confess it to him and receive forgiveness. Be careful of any church or preacher who will not preach against sin because they may make you feel great about yourself all the time the sin is destroying you in your life. Notice Peter said in, in Luke 5, 8, Get away, go away from me, Lord. Peter wanted to be left alone. Now, this is part of the way our, the conviction of sin in our life it, it, it tends, you know, when we get started feeling guilty and shameful about our sin, we tend to want to be away from people by ourselves. And that's what we see happening here with Peter. But the truth is, this is when we need to be with the Lord. This is when we need to be with God's people. Hopefully God's people, when we realize our sinfulness, will want to encourage us and love on us and help us. I know the Lord wants to do that. He wants us to come to him in prayer when we have conviction of sin. And, and Jesus said to Peter in ver, chapter 5, verse 10, Do not fear. Seek God's forgiveness when you sin. Even if you sin over and over, keep coming back to him for forgiveness. He will work in your heart and help you to hate that sin in your life, to turn away from it. Keep coming back to him. Don't fear him. God loves you. Now, if you continue to disobey, if you refuse to put your faith in Christ, there is a judgment coming. And I don't want to make light of that. There is a judgment coming. God will judge those who have not put their faith in Christ and there is a hell waiting for them. That brings me no joy to say that. But it's the truth. We need to turn from our sins, put our faith in Christ, receive forgiveness. That's, what, that's why he went to the cross, so you could have forgiveness. Hear Jesus, obey Jesus, be convicted by Jesus, and we have to follow Jesus. Look at verse 10. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear, from now on you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. James and John were also amazed. All these fishermen, I believe, at this time in their life, began to follow Jesus. They left their boats. I understand now who Jesus is, I'm going to give him my life fully and do what he says. Now, that doesn't mean you have to stop fishing if you're a fisherman. I mean, you, know, you do what God says. That's what God led them to do. That's what they did because that's what God led them to do. The, the key here is to obey Jesus, to hear him, what he's saying to your heart, to be willing to do what he wants. And, and he convicts us of our sin. And that's a good thing, so we can turn from that sin and follow him. Now, what I'm going to say next may surprise you, so please listen carefully. Many people who believe in Jesus will not go to heaven. What? What are you saying, preacher? Let me
me share with you some of the most frightening words in all of Scripture. Jesus says in Matthew 7, verses 21 through 27, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And then he goes on to say, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. So, if you believe that your bank is going to fail and you're going to lose all your money in the bank and you leave your money in there, do you really believe it's going to fail? No. If you believe your bank is about to fail and you need to get your money out, you're going to go get your money out. You don't want to lose it. Uh, or say... Um, <clears throat> Please understand here, I'm not saying that works is necessary for your salvation. <clears throat> what I'm saying is a faith that genuinely saves is a faith that ends up in a person's life where they have works in their life. There's evidence in their life that they've changed. It's, it's not that the works save you. It's your faith that saves you. It's your belief that saves you. It's your faith. But it's a faith that works. It's a faith that results in a changed life. Again, if, if you believe that um, that bridge over there, I don't think I better drive my truck across it. It looks like it's about to fall. If you really don't believe it's that bridge is going to hold you in your truck, you're not going to drive on it. Uh, you're, that's, you're going to do something based on what you believe. I guess you've heard of the priest and the pastor who were standing by the side of the road, and they were holding up a sign that said, The end is near. Turn yourself around before it's too late. They planned to hold up the sign to each passing car, and one guy yelled out the window, leave us alone, you religious nuts. And as he turned the corner, they heard him, uh, the car splash in screeching tires as, because the bridge was gone. The bridge was fallen and his car plunged into the, the river. Uh, so the pastor said to the priest, you think we should just change the sign to say bridge out instead? <laughs> you know. So uh, it does no good to say, I believe in Jesus if you're not going to do what he says. You need to be willing to do what he says. In Mark 1.15, Jesus says, repent and believe the gospel. Repent means change your mind with a resulting change in direction in your life. He called his disciples to repent and believe the gospel. And if you repent and believe the gospel, you will follow Jesus. Now, you will not be a perfect follower. I'm not a perfect follower, and no one is. We're still, all of us as believers, learning to follow growing in our discipleship. Okay, we have to hear Jesus, obey Jesus, be convicted by Jesus, and follow Jesus. And here's the last one that I'm done. We have to fish for Jesus. Um, a pastor spent all day fishing and caught nothing. So he went to the market and he picked out three fat fish in the market. And then he said to the store owner, would you throw me those fish I want to be able to tell the deacons at church I caught these fish without lying. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, 
That reminds me of one a fellow named Oliver Herford once said, there are more fish taken out of a stream than were ever in it. <laughs> so, well, the story I read to you today is a fish story you can believe. Matthew 4, 19, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Make no mistake about it. Jesus calls every one of us as believers to be fishers of men, women, children. He calls all of us as believers to tell others about Jesus. I heard of a, uh, <clears throat> by the way, some people have the idea, uh, well, we're paying you as the preacher, you do all the fishing. No, that's not the way it works, no. I can't do my fishing and your fishing too. See, I can't go down to the schoolhouse where the children are. Uh, I can't go to your job, wherever that is. I can't go around the people you go around. Well, maybe sometimes I go around them, but most of the time I can. I can't do your job for you. You can't do my job for me. We need to each do what God's called us to do. And he's called us as believers to fish for people, to tell people about the Lord Jesus. I heard of a bumper sticker that said, be you fishers of men, you catch them and he'll clean them. Sometimes a bumper sticker gets it right. There's nothing more important I can do in this life than introduce someone else to Jesus because that will have eternal consequences if they will put their faith in him and I can't control what they do as a result of my sharing my faith, but the seed is planted. And maybe one day in heaven, we'll find out how God used that seed in someone's life. Sometimes we're blessed to see how God uses that seed in someone's life now. But you need to be willing as believers to share the faith with others. Now, sometimes people say, well, uh, preacher, if I do that, they may ask me a question I don't know the answer to. That's actually a good thing, I think. Because what you can do then is say, you know what, I have to think about that some and get back with you. And then you can go think about it, read the Bible, maybe ask your pastor or someone and, and get back with them. You're continuing the conversation. Or maybe you can say, you know what, that's a great question. Why don't you come to church with me this Sunday and you can ask the pastor that question. That's great. By the way, feel free to give me a heads up. The person may ask you, you know, this question. Feel free. Uh, we have to hear Jesus, obey Jesus, be convicted by Jesus, follow Jesus, and fish for Jesus. Let's bow for prayer, shall we? Lord, I'm so thankful for your love for us. I'm thankful for not giving up on me. And you don't give up on any of us. Sometimes we give up on you, but you don't give up on us. You keep reaching, speaking, help us to listen. And I don't know what you're saying to anyone here. I can't look in anyone's heart. If there's someone here that they know in their heart, they've never put their faith in Jesus, I pray this morning they would do that. I pray, Lord, they would just open their heart and ask you to forgive them, come into their heart, and cleanse them of sin. Ask you to be their Lord and Savior. It's not the exact words that are so important. It's a willingness to believe and a willingness to obey and return from sin. And Lord, I pray for the rest of us, if there's whatever you're speaking about, I, I, again, I can't look in hearts, but maybe someone here, they know they need to be telling others about Jesus, but they've been holding back. I pray they would commit themselves to do that this morning. Or maybe you're leading someone else to join our church. And Lord, I just want your will for us. I want people to do what you believe they want. You want them to do. That's what's important. Not what I want, but what you want. So help us listen to you and obey you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me?
and Nancy's going to 